Hey guys, welcome back to Urban Outdoors. I'm Urban and hey, I'm glad you're here. Today I'm going to explore the left side of my property. I've never been to this area before, so I don't know what we'll find. But let's go. Come on. guys so taking a little walk around the property exploring some parts of the property I've never been to before came across this interesting little find tell me what you think there's bricks over there so apparently there was some type of structure looks like over there some of it has actually fallen into this green murky that is water I'll throw a stick in there so you can see there's a green murky pool of nothing here in the middle of nowhere what do you guys make of it huh very interesting let's see what else we can find well, here's another little something, something. At some point, there was some type of wooden structure here. It is, of course, dilapidated long ago. Perhaps a... Oh, what's that? It's a jet up above somewhere. It's long gone. But anyway, we got this wooden structure here, some barbed wire, and some tin, very old. I don't know, maybe it was some type of animal shelter at some point, or a wood bin, I don't know. Well, let's see what else we can find. Check this out, guys. This is a, a tree that uprooted. Look at the size of that. I'll go stand by it so you can see how large this is. Wow, it just uprooted. It must have taken a lot to uproot that tree like that. That is a huge root system though. Check it out. Look at the hole it left. Wow. Let's see what else we can find. Well, this is a little cool little shady spot for me to stop and have a lunch break. So let me get things set up and uh, I'll show you what I got on the pot. Alright, so I've got my Wolf Wise camping chair set up here. Gonna have me a little mountain house lasagna with meat sauce. I finally found the one person serving size y'all at Sportsman's Warehouse usually all I can find is two servings which is good if you got two people but when you're flying solo that's a lot to eat so now I got me a one serving and now I know where to find them I'll be going back uh, of course you guys know in my you've probably seen the video for my uh, 
rustic bushcraft kit. I have my Stanley cook set with the cup. So that's what I'm going to use to prepare this meal. I'll open it up and you will find on the inside some coffee crystals, my stove, a damn big lighter, and in the stove, sometimes it's hard to get out, but I have my gas can. So, let me get this Coleman Peak One stove set up by screwing the gas canister on, setting it on the ground, opening up the stove as such. Make sure it's flush and even. Uh, I need to add a little bit of water, don't I? Let's see. I'm going to add one cup. That's what I like about these Stanley measuring cups. They've got the uh, measurements on the side. So you can see 8 ounces, 16 ounces. Well, it goes 8, 12, 16, 20 ounces. But uh, we need 16 ounces for this. So I will fill it up to that. Uh, 16 ounces is a cup, right? I think so. That's what we're going with. All right, let me turn this stove on. I hear it. The damn big lighter starts it. Let's put the top on there so it'll boil a little bit faster. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a mountain house. Lasagna with meat sauce. And we can also, I have in my, uh, my little Yeti some Coke. I don't go anywhere hardly without Coke. So with our lasagna and meat sauce, we're gonna have a little bit of Coke. And, reach over in this pocket, we're going to have a little bit of bourbon. There we go. Nothing wrong with a little bit of Coke and bourbon in the middle of the day, right? Great lunch. And while we're waiting for the water to boil, I'll eat it with my wooden spoon here. While we're waiting for that, I'll take out my legendary Saxon tobacco pouch. Let's see what we got in there. Probably a corn cob pipe because that's what I keep in there. Yep. A little Missouri Mir Chong corn cob pipe. Tobacco pouch. This is an old pouch. This tobacco pouch belonged to my father. And, uh, it still holds tobacco, keeps it nice and fresh. It's got a, a rubber, a rubberized lining on the inside, which helps to keep the tobacco, uh, fresh. <sighs> but it's, uh, got a little zipper top made out of leather. So, uh, yeah, while we're waiting for the water to boil, I will enjoy inside that little pouch I have the last the very last of my Tewksbury Hobbit's Wheat tobacco which was my favorite tobacco of all time and then the company went out of business you can't get it anymore so I'm cherishing that last little bit that I have there I hate that they did that, man. I, it really, uh, I just, that was my favorite tobacco of all time. And, uh, I hate that they went out of business. Uh. But yeah, this part of my, uh, the property that I live on, I've never explored before. 
we've got eight acres out here and it's mostly swamp and uh, about the only way to get through it is if you have some high waders or at least some knee-high mud boots because it's very wet very swampy there are a lot of natural springs back here and um, it's just messy going Mm, I'm loving the hobbit's weed. Wow. So what do you guys think about this uh, coronavirus that's going around? I know a lot of doomsday preppers are all hyped up about it, making money off of it. I hate to see that. I think it's something we need to keep our eye on. Kind of reminds me of that movie. I think it came out in the 90s with Morgan Freeman called Contagion. I think the lady or somebody bought a monkey over or something like that or maybe it started with a bat biting a pig and somebody eating i don't remember anyway it came from people eating some kind of shit they shouldn't have been eating and it spread worldwide it's funny how this stuff works but you know i guess you have to be prepared for it I checked my uh, blackout bag, which is where I keep um, my N95 filtered masks. And I thought about, well, do I need to buy a full respirator type of mask for me and my wife? Or will these nine uh, N95 masks work? And I did a little bit of research. And, uh, of course, as if you already got it, the mask is going to do no good. But... If it does come to an area where I am, and I am populating a, uh, a hospital or a highly occupied, populated area, which I don't do anyway, might not be a bad idea to dig into that blackout bag and grab those N95 filtered masks and wear them. <sighs> Haven't heard of it in my area. I think California in Texas from what I hear but you don't know what to believe I will tell you this it can be scary when you have a trach and you have the type of cancer that I have my immune system is already weak and I already have to be careful and they tell me that when I go to hospitals, highly populated places, and everything like that anyway, I should wear a scarf to cover my trach in addition to this filter. And, uh, but like I say, I usually try to stay away from highly populated places. There's just, just not much in those areas that I desire. Not boiling yet. Turn up the heat a little bit. What are you guys doing, if anything, to kind of get prepared for it? Of course, you know, you got to wash your hands a lot, keep things desanitized. Not desanitized, sanitized. You know what I'm saying. So I went to Wally World today to get some groceries, and I picked up a couple of extra bottles of bleach. And some of that Lysol disinfectant, got a three pack of it for like seven bucks or something. And I also bought a big old bottle of the uh, hand sanitizer, you know, the gel stuff. I'm going to start being careful. And I think that's just, I think that's at the stage we're at now is to just be careful. Um, prevention, of course. Because I think once you get it, there's not much you can do about it. I know they're working on it. They say that you can actually contract it and go for like two weeks without even knowing you have it before you get the symptoms. 
which that's what's scary about it because people will have it. They won't know that they have it or even think that they have it. And they'll be walking around doing normal things, infecting other people, not knowing it. And then two weeks later, they start having the symptoms. All right, we're boiling now. So, let's open up this mountain house. It doesn't have the tear off. Oh, yeah, it does. Let's open up this lasagna. Don't forget to take out the silicon pad. I did that once and found it floating in my food. And then I was scared to eat it. Because I didn't know if it was safe. Alright, let me turn the stove off. Gotta be careful, man. Hot water will burn. No shit, huh? Alright, let's put that in there. Let's close it up. Smells good already. When I poured that water in there, it started uh started the uh, aroma of the lasagna. Mix it up a little bit. There we go. Boy, that's hot. You gotta hold the top here so as not to burn yourself. <sighs> All right, now we're gonna let that sit. It says to let it sit for I don't know how long. Oh, I will, I'll put way too much water, y'all. I, I put twice as much water as I supposed to because I'm so used to doing the two. I wasn't thinking that this was a single serving. So this might be a little runny. Oh, well. All right. So we let it stand for four minutes and then stir it. And then enjoy right out of the pouch. That's one reason why I have this long uh, handled wooden spoon because the long handle gets into the mountain house packages a lot better. And um, instead of having that little short spoon where you have to stick your hand down in there and burn yourself and everything, yeah, that's not good. Let's try this bourbon and coke. Oh, yeah. I used to be all about the rum and coke. But I've, late, I've lately been turned on to the bourbon. And, uh, I don't know. I tried some Jack Daniels honey bourbon. What, a couple of weeks ago? I bought one of the little mini bottles of it. And tried it out, and I really liked it. I'm going to go back next time I get a bottle of bourbon. That's what I'm going to get, the Jack Daniels honey. I also came across a new bourbon, thanks to the little mini bottles, called Larceny. And man, that's some sweet stuff got a nice taste you almost forget you're drinking bourbon I tell you what these little Missouri Mirrorshawn pipes are good smokers they really are so it is a beautiful day today here in South Carolina it is about 54 degrees so it's not too cold, not too hot. Good day to get out and about. And uh, I always like to use the equipment that I have in my packs to make sure that it still works. And uh, time to rotate out some of them, you know, these meals and stuff. Although these mountain house meals have a long life, shelf life. This one, for example, ooh, still hot. Let's see, what is the date on it? Wow. It says best by August 2047. Could that be right? Wow. 
That's almost 30 years shelf life. Man. That's hard to believe, y'all. I guess I didn't need to rotate that out quite yet. But hey, I wanted to try it. And I was excited to find the one serving size. Because, uh, like I say, usually those two servings. One thing I want to mention, too. When you guys go out and do something like this, wherever you go, trash in, trash out. Leave no trace. Alright? Don't leave the little end of your mountain house on the ground or your uh, silicon pack. Make sure you put it back in your bag. Or if you bring a um, trash can with you, make sure you put it back in the trash can and take it out with you. I hate when I go to national parks or state parks and you're out to have a good time and you look around and there's just trash everywhere. That's one thing that I, oh, I have no tolerance for people who litter. And, in my opinion, if Satan has a special place in hell for him, that's cool. I hate to see anybody go to hell, but damn, no need to litter like that. Yeah. Alright, so I guess it's been a, a while. I'm going to go ahead and take this stove apart. It is already cooled off. Still got some gas in this can, so I could probably, uh... I don't know how much more I could cook on it, but how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? A woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. That's what I always say. <sighs> oh, I forgot, man. I forgot about my little kooksa cup. I wish I had a bigger one. I bought this one online, and it won't hold that much stuff. Compared to this metal cup that I have. And uh, I just always have the metal cup with the stove because the stove fits into it. I often forget about my little kooksa. While I'm waiting here before I get into this meal, I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I think I'm at 742 now. And uh, for those of you who have subscribed to my channel, I really do appreciate it. I enjoy your feedback and your comments. <clears throat> I enjoy also watching your videos and going on your adventures and learning about you. And I really do appreciate all of you who have already subscribed to my channel. And if you haven't yet... What are you waiting for? I've been thinking about it a lot lately and... More than anything, the reason I'm doing this now is uh, so that when I'm dead and gone, my children and my grandchildren will have a way to remember me more. And I think that's one thing that's awesome about technology. And I think back about, you know, I miss my brother and I miss my father and I miss my mother all the time. And all I have is pictures and they're limited. Of course, I have the memories up here, but how great would it be if I had something like YouTube back then that I could go back and relive those moments and uh, watch videos of them talking and showing their lives, and I could be more of a part of that. It would be awesome. So I think about that a lot. And uh, I hope that my grandchildren uh, will enjoy these videos. And uh, if I live to see my great-grandchildren, and if I don't live to see my great-grandchildren, hopefully they'll be able to get to know me through this platform. My grandkids could say, yeah, this was your great-grandfather. His name wasn't really Arabin. But that's what he calls himself on these videos. <laughs> Just so you guys know, Arabin is not my given name. 
It is a, a nickname that I came up with back when I used to do LARP, which is live action role play. And I uh, needed a character name and I needed a, a background and a history, so I created this whole character named Arabin Roundtree from a small village called Biggleswade in Bedfordshire, England, north of, or London, uh, north of London, yeah. And, um, anyway, I won't go into that. That's on another video. But that's how the name Arabin came about. And my YouTube channel used to be TR Puffin Stuff, but then I changed the name of it to Arabin Outdoors when I decided to start doing, in addition to pipe videos, more outdoor type related things like this. I had one, I lost a subscriber not too long ago, but at least this guy had the nerve to contact me, or no, I should say the decency to contact me and tell me why he was up subbing, unsubbing. And he said, I subbed to your outdoor channel because your videos were about outdoor related items. But it seems your videos have become more of a variety show. So I've decided to unsub. Sorry, dude, it's my channel. And I don't see anything wrong with having more than one interest on a YouTube channel. Now, if you only want to do bushcraft videos, okay, that's cool. Or if you only want to do homesteading, or if you only want to do prepping, or if you only want to do pipes, that's cool. That's what's great about YouTube. That's what's great about America. Do what you want. It's your channel. But I don't see anything wrong with having variety. If you are a, uh, say for instance, you're a bush crafter, and uh, I have a video about pipes only, and you don't want to watch that video, don't watch it. Just click on the ones that are about bushcraft. But that doesn't mean that I should only feature one thing on my channel if I want to, if I want to do more. Here we go, guys. It's very soupy, and it's still hot. But it's good. Mm. Mountain House, once again, <clears throat> delivers. All right, well, I know you guys don't want to sit here and watch me eat this lasagna, so I'm going to cut away and pack up after I eat, after I finish my bourbon and my lasagna, and then I'll check back with you before I head out. Stick around, though. <sighs> All right, so the lasagna is gone. I'm full, just about done with my bourbon and coke. Then I'll be packing up, heading back to the house. But hey, I appreciate you guys coming along with me on this little adventure. And uh, and uh, till next time, keep calm, carry on, keep it outdoors.